broadcasting alive from the Green Room Studios in Nashville, Tennessee. It's the At Home Show with Josh Carey and David Bates, celebrating 25 years of home and garden wisdom. Without further ado, your hosts, Josh Carey and David Bates. Hey, welcome in, everybody. It's Saturday morning. It's time for the At Home Show. Indeed. We're, we are coming to you from where, David Bates? Well, we're coming to you live from the Green Room, located at Bates Nursery and Garden Center. Right here in beautiful there's, there's Nashville, the Green Room sign right there. Tennessee. Yeah. yeah, we do it every Saturday morning. That's right. But, and, uh, yeah, we're a gardening program. Yes, we are. And we talk about all kinds of gardening things, both indoors and outdoors. Inside out. Yeah, so, yeah, and yeah, uh, yeah. we uh, also start off our mm-hmm. discussion by looking at the weather. We do. And that's from a normally a local perspective to Nashville, Tennessee, which mm-hmm. is where we are. And today is Saturday. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a partly cloudy day, 85 degrees. Uh, pretty nice, you know, a, ho- a little bit cooler than yesterday, I think. Yesterday, I even saw like 91 at one point. Uh, so did I. It was hot. Uh, you know, it's a little dusty. We haven't had any rain for a bit. There's a little hope for it going forward in the fo- forecast. We'll get to that here in a second. On mm-hmm. Sunday, slightly cooler, 84. Slightly again on Monday, 82. Having a few more clouds, a few less clouds on Tuesday, and still uh, 84 again. And Wednesday, scattered thunderstorms. But, you know, not a lot of rain. Uh, right now it's saying 1,700 is the statistical chance, mm-hmm. which means uh, we might not get anything. We might, if you're in the right spot, you might get quite a chunk. But I'm going to guess on the none side. Yeah. Would you, and then by Thursday morning, 82 degrees and uh, maybe remaining shower after midnight. So, you know, those scattered thunderstorms are likely afternoon in, in order. And then on Friday, it'll be 82 degrees and sunshine again and slightly cooler as we move through the end of the um, month of September. Wow. Next weekend, Saturday, will wind it up for us in uh, October straight ahead. Isn't so, that special? It, well, it is special. Some I people mean, already that, have their Halloween decorations. I was going to say, it means giant skeletons. Who's That's that voice? Hey, uh, hey, uh, before I get to that voice, <laughs> okay, I'm going to talk about this non-voice, the, the guy uh-huh. in the green shirt right here in front of us, Tyler Blankenship. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Tyler, for being here. and uh, You're welcome. Successfully negotiating, negotiating getting us on the air again today, and we're always appreciative of that. Mm-hmm. And that voice across the way uh-huh. was... The general manager himself, Adam Chapman. Welcome in today, Adam. Yes, thank you for having me. Austin has the day off, and we've got Caroline Gant, as always. Thank you, Caroline. Someone has to be here to try to keep us in line, and Caroline, we appreciate appreciate your efforts. Thank you. It takes a lot. A lot of energy. It does take a lot. So, (laughs) anyway, I know that we have questions, Mm -hmm. and I know that we have... uh, Likely got answers. Maybe. I think we do. We got and a little bit of both. There's a really good chance those answers might also be correct. Because we might make it up. I would hope so. Yeah. Well, We've been known to do that. We have. Have you we? And have I, we, Josh? Yes. Maybe you. Huh? Josh, a dubious no. claim. Yeah, well, Josh it, and I have, in, in uh, years gone by when mm-hmm. we were a radio program exclusively, yes. we uh, we got creative with our answers. And, yes. you know, but it was all in good fun, and we could still do that. Two full but, hours of a snipe show. But usually people are... Remember that? Uh, uh, yes. The snipe show. Or the, uh, MUF, the MUFOs. MUFOs. Yeah, MUFOs was The micro good. UFOs. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, uh-huh. So, you know, we, we, fun. we, we Bear covered spots. some things, and then yeah. there yeah. was... Uh, then it was John and Jolton. Yes, there was yeah. John. And I don't know if John's still in Jolton or if John still is or not. But, I bet uh, there's still a John. Oh, yeah. Jolton. Oh, I'm yeah. Pretty, pretty not sure. this Probably. one, John. Well, hey, before we hop uh-huh. on questions, I do want to talk about things that are happening at the nursery right now. Okay. So as you can see, we're surrounded by beauty today. We did talk about getting the Isley truck in the last few weeks. It finally came in. And David did talk about it in the newsletter. So all the plants in here today are from Isley, which we will talk about a little later when I do my What's in Room segment. Mm -hmm. But we also got the Talavera truck. So it usually comes once a year. We don't know when it's actually going to get here. Mm -hmm. A trailer straight from Mexico just pulls into the lot at any time. We're always surprised when they get here. 
So we have a few pieces of Talavera in the green room today, and we have so much at the nursery. And I actually asked the guy how long it takes to pack the trailer, because it's this huge trailer, and he said three to four days of them just packing all this pottery, figurines, these gorgeous, uh, gorgeous things that you can buy here into a trailer that uh, just comes across the border. Mm -hmm. Directamente mm -hmm. de Guanajuato, Mexico. That's right, David. Guanajuato. 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 Guanajuato, see? Yeah, so come down, get you some some Talavera and some Isley. Yeah, this is, this is Chico plants. right here mm -hmm. in front of us here, the little black uh -huh. chihuahua. This That's is Bob. Oh, oh you, Bob's the rooster. Bob. Yes, yeah, You can just barely see Chico's head sticking up. Just up, up above a little bit, just peeking. There you go. There we Chico. go. Chico wow. Has oh, like Chico, a, que rico. Okay. <laughs> it's muy rico. So <laughs> anyway, Los that, actually, that okay. means actually tasty is what that means in case you didn't didn't know oh wow. it so. doesn't mean doesn't actually if you're using it in that context it would not mean rich it would mean tasty, tasty. so maybe if you're into eating dogs <laughs> that or does cat. Apply. i can oh, taste yeah. the colors okay Mm -hmm. Taste the colors of the rainbow. Oh, that's probably copyright. It's got little skittles <laughs> on it. I mean, there's beautiful texture to these. Not only the yeah. color is great, um, but yeah. uh, there's yeah. some gorgeous stuff. We got bird baths. We got large pots. We got mm -hmm. some big giant jack o' lanterns in this year that we haven't gotten before. We usually get the smaller ones and the medium, but we got some huge ones. And there's not a lot of the stuff. So come on down and take a look. Mm -hmm. But let's go ahead and get into some questions. We have a question about planting on a slope. Looking for plants that would be happy on a slope in partial sun. On hmm. a slope, are they are they trying to cover the slope, or are they just trying maybe they to just want a plant? I don't know. They didn't give us any other information. Well, you said partial, what would you put you on said a partial slope? Sun? Partial sun. Uh, well, if you're just trying to uh, create a hedge or a screen uh, in partial sun, I mean. Depends on how big you want it to get. You know, uh, laurels would be effective. Uh, skip laurel if you want it to get a little taller. Maybe even the distillium uh, linebacker mm. might, be, might be a good one. Uh, Is that for an that. outside linebacker or inside linebacker? I think it depends on. It goes uh, inside and outside. Yeah, yeah. it does. Uh -huh. Whether you're in a 5-3 or a 3-5. Yes. Yeah, uh -huh. yes. It's a press and a full out blitz. It's a man. sports champ for okay. sure. So those are good evergreens for that. Uh, if you want to go with uh, deciduous flowering, you could do like a native uh, viburnum, like arrowwood viburnum. That would look good. That uh, would look good, so. yeah. Now, one little uh, unsolicited bit of information to whomever is asking the question is when you're planting on a slope, and it does Ooh. not matter what you're planting, it makes watering obviously more Ooh. difficult. Mm -hmm. And uh, in light of that, if you are planting with a saucer, and you should be when you're planting, you know, recommend saucering plants at least for the first several months. And what that does is gives you, you take this excess soil and you put it on the downhill side and make like a little ring, a little saucer effect so that it has a place for water to pool up and to soak straight down. Because when you're watering on the hillside, it tends to just run off. Gravity is great. It mm -hmm. is. So... Mm -hmm. Uh, having that earthen dam, that little saucer on the bottom, on the bottom half, if depending mm -hmm. on the amount of slope it is, is very beneficial, and that's a trick that can give you a lot of uh, added benefit with respect to keeping the plants watered well enough. So, I've never heard when of it's that. dry, like, uh -huh. like yeah, and that's the, that's the key when you're planting on a slope is is keeping them wet. It doesn't really matter what you plant there; otherwise, it's mm -hmm. it's just keeping them watered. You know. What I'm about to plant on a slope that I'm very excited about. We got a lot of trees in the last week or two here at the nursery. We got some giant uh, weeping willow trees. Oh and God. I have a huge slope that uh, goes down into a spring uh, that's got a little bit of stream going down. So I'm going to plant a willow on that slope and see how it does. You well, you know, so I'm going to use the saucer method well, for if watering. You, if you get that willow close enough to the stream where it can actually stay wet, you know, the good mm -hmm. thing about either a bald cypress or a weeping willow is that it is impossible to overwater them. Correct. They, they literally can be sitting in water. So mm -hmm. if you can uh, take advantage of the wet soil conditions, uh, you're not going to have to do much to it after mm -mm. you plant it. I've got a sandbar willow down there right now that just was a volunteer that came up that got washed in from somewhere. And it's doing great. Those things grow so quickly, but I'm excited about having a weeper. Mm-hmm. Okay, guys, are you ready to talk about Spirea? Hey, Jude Roberts. Oh, she's ready. coming down for some Talavera. 
Oh, yeah, nice. yeah. Come get you some. There, Like I said, there's a lot. It's a little spread all over the nursery because we had to find spots to put it. But there's little pockets of color everywhere. I may everywhere. have to take Chico home with me. We yeah, can, I think you need, I think think you need Chico. You need mm-hmm. a new buddy. All right, so my blue kazoo spirea has fried up despite watering. Are they actually a shade shrub? Uh, I have heard. I've never planted that one, but I have a friend of, my, of the of the show, a Shane, friend. Shane 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 a Burton. Friend. Uh, he planted some at his uh, house, um, and he said, "Yeah, it's, it actually does better in some shade." So, um, huh? I didn't know. You that. know, but it, it would live in the sun. It may just. They're so sensitive to uh, spireas in general. Their their wilt point is so sen- like once they wilt beyond a certain point. The the leaves just curl up and dry up, but they're not dead. No, they're going to leaf back out if you as long as you keep watering them. How often do we get people who bring them back as dead, oh, and then we the time. we stick them back in a container and irrigate them for a couple of weeks, and they flush right yep. back out. So, yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. So oh just, yeah. Just stick with it. You you should be good. You should be okay. Yeah. What to plant with peonies? They are looking rough this time of year. Yeah, so right now mine are looking sad, but I leave those leaves up so they can get all the sun that they can get before winter comes in, so then they have more blooms next year. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mix echinacea with mine, although my echinacea looks sad right now. I'd say lantana would pair well with it as well. I would think so. Maybe Mm -hmm. rutabecchia, you know, black season. Those kind of bloom out by now, too. Right. Uh, you could plant something short in front or tall behind. Maybe some catmint, maybe. Catmint would be great. Yeah. I know yeah. you love catmint. Mm-hmm. I feel like that comes up every time you're on the show. It's good. It's just it blooms all the time. It's just either about. it's either that or nepeda, either one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> which, which of course is the same thing. Same thing. Yes. For those who yeah. don't yes. know, that was a yes. hort zinnias joke. would also be yes. a really good a option yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. because zinnias. as the summer progresses, mine are still in full bloom right now, but they're starting to eat everything in those beds that um, they were planted next to. So that would kind of cover up some of those sad-looking leaves, give you a lot of blooms. Mm-hmm. And like I said, rutabecchia and uh, echinacea right now are starting to look sad as well. But zinnias and lantana are still just. Going wild. My new quick. blooms on mine. That, you have what? I, I'm getting new blooms on, on mine. On your zinnias? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mine are still just like popping and out. New it's flowers. important for people to remember that just because things perhaps look a little sad right now doesn't mean there's anything wrong with them. You know, they're, they're, we're at the uh, very end of summer. Actually, I guess we have already rolled over into the. Uh, I think today is the first the, day of today fall. Right? It yeah. is. So, Happy since autumn. we now are in fall, that's the reason why. It's fall. It's yeah. fall, man. The days are getting um, two minutes shorter. and 16 seconds shorter every day. So, you know, that's what happens. Oh, yeah. gosh. They're We're moving act- towards darkness. We are. Mm. That's Hello. sad time of Well, I mean, we, you know, the whole universe is moving towards darkness, is it not? Yes. I mean, that's true. Well, yeah, the right. expanding nature of but it. That's, what I'm, that's yeah. what I'm saying. It's yeah. entropy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, now, here we go. Yep. Now, is that more related to dark energy or dark matter, Adam? Uh, it's the dark side of the force is what uh, it is. I think it, all three. I think yes. all three. Yes. Mm. <laughs> I'm lost here. Okay. Okay, but let's just bring it back around. We were talking right. about these peonies looking sad right now. A lot of people, I know, want to cut these down when your daffodils are all bloomed out in the spring. You want to go ahead and remove those leaves. But in order for that plant to be super happy and healthy and get bigger year after year, you're going to want to leave all of those up. So planting for uh, seasonal changes and just month by month is always something to think about when you are starting your new beds. So speaking of planting seasonally, we've got some pansy questions today. All right. Will pansies do well in pots? Yes. 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 Looks like we're all on the same page with that. Yeah. Yeah. The the only time that they won't do well in pots is when you get into the kind of the uh, negative five. Well, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. actually, they, they'll look bad well before that yeah. temperature, but it won't. It likely won't kill them. You know, they're mm-hmm. very cold, uh, resilient, Solid. but it can burn the foliage back. So, yeah. if you're really, if you have them in containers and you're trying to keep them blooming nice all winter, you could just move them in or cover them during cold spells. But if it's below about Oh, 20 degrees. Uh, that soil temperature is going to shut those things down. The but the other side of it is as soon as it warms back up, 
They pop. They immediately start uh, setting bud and blooming again. So. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. They flush right back out. Although I did lose mine with the December freeze. But, so you know, I. what didn't we lose That's in that true. December freeze, y'all? Yes. My pansies in ground did fine through it. They, they came back and they looked amazing. And I was actually really sad to have to pull them up. Uh, but we are full up on pansies right now. When you walk back into that annual greenhouse, it is... Like a pansy bonanza. Jane I mean, has got it going on. Jane has got there. it going on. Shout out to Jane. She is doing great with all those annuals. Um, and she knows where everything is. It's insane. You can call back there and Jane's like, I know exactly how many we have and where those are without looking. That's amazing. It, when you, you have, mm-hmm. Folks, you have to see this this greenhouse to, to appreciate what Caroline is saying. Mm-hmm. Come get you some Talavera and look at those pansies. And mm-hmm. our next question about pansies is, when is the best time to plant them? So we have them in stock right now. We're full up. The temperatures have gone down a little bit. So I think I'd Josh needs to answer this one. No, you had to do it at three thirty because mm-hmm. of all no. starts three thirty is the so. best yep. time. Right? But, uh, you know, I mean, I mean two thirty is not no. bad, but it's a you know, Come and on, actually uh, the, the reason we say that joke three thirty is that you know they're they're in little con- confined root balls in mm-hmm. little containers, so you don't there's no transplant shock, no. so it doesn't really matter what time you do it. No. But the time of year is right now. Yep. So if that's <laughs> right what the question now. is. Speaking of uh, time of year questions, Kay's got a question. She says she has received a box of daffodil blubs. Blubs. And bubs, <laughs> bubs or blubs. Yeah. They're, they're LED blubs. So. <laughs> okay. But uh, she wants to know, uh, she's not planted until November. Is September too early? Yes. Yeah, don't yeah. do it now. Yeah, soil temperature is still too high. I okay. think you want to you want to wait till November, close to Thanksgiving. You don't want you don't want to waste percent. all that energy. And they're probably almost more and more. Right. Uh, the bulbs are pre-chilled, and what that does is that that buys you uh, dormancy that you would otherwise have to wait on. And the dormancy is necessary for bulb type plants for them to flower well. And, and if you plant them too early, they're going to start sprouting, and you yeah. don't want that because you're going to spend some of that energy, which will actually work against you. So just wait. I would wait until December. I would not. I would wait until it's really cool, consistent. Well, she doesn't usually until November, but wait until Thanksgiving for yeah, sure. You yeah. know. Is there a rule of average low temperatures? Like does that? Well, again, it comes to below so, fifty five at night. If, you know? if, if yeah, that's probably a pretty good range. Your soil temperature is going to likely be a, a, you know below sixty for sure. Was, mm-hmm. Would you concur with that, Adam? Yes, sir. Yeah, and that's going to take a while for us. Yeah, to get that's to that what I'm area. saying. You got you yeah. got to get to towards Thanksgiving, and it really depends on the weather we're having. You mm-hmm. know, if it's a cool November, you know, maybe earlier, but. You know. you know, I got to jump in because Austin's not here, and I uh-huh. know he would be talking about layering your bulbs with your pansies on top. So that's yep. one method yep. that he uses. I've used it now after learning about it, and I, lo- I know a lot of people like to do it, so get your bulbs. Well, I know he did tulip well, bulbs Well, you're this already year. down there planting. Right. Mm-hmm. You just have the pansies nearby and just stick them right, right in on after, top. after mm-hmm. you get the bulbs planted. It's all very easy. Yep, and then like we were talking about, when stuff starts to look sad or bloomed out, you'll have that second round of something that's just starting to grow. And mm-hmm. it's quite really deep good. at that point, too, when you do them in the, those layers. Yeah. They're, they're when, the, at least yeah. at that moment, if you're co-planting them, you know where the bulb you just planted is located. And if you go back and try to right. do it, you may you know, miss the mark. You may be right on top of Uh-oh. it. Uh-oh. Don't so want you don't, that to don't want that to happen. No, mm-hmm. we don't. Let's talk violas real quick. Okay. While we're on this pansy topic, can violas grow in shade? Um, grow, yes. Flower. Right. Not as much. Yeah. I've heard that they like shade a little bit more than pansies. Well, they like, they're just tougher than pansies in general. Ah. I mean, they're, they are. are we say, hold on. Are we saying that small things are tougher than big things? Because their blooms are a little bit smaller. I'm and s- I am the smallest person in this Well, room. I'm saying in this case, that's true. <laughs> okay. But, but oh, not, not, across frog either board. not across the board. Okay. All right. So they can grow in shade. They might just not bloom as much mm-hmm. and get a little bit leggy. I know Correct. I've had that happen before. Correct. Yep. And you know, they are decidedly more winter hardy. So if yes. you if you were going to plant in containers, uh, we ta- had a question earlier about putting pansies in containers. Violas are perhaps a better choice because they are a bit more adept at handling the They're extremes. Cold. Yeah. Yeah. Again, those tough little little things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. All right. Best way to trim down African fountain grass. 
Well, um, shears. Would, yeah, <laughs> take a but big want, sharp usually, sword and just usually, chop it down. Uh, as a general rule, with grasses, you want to wait until uh, early spring, late winter before you cut them back, um, because the stems are hollow, and if you cut them back in the fall, the water kind of works its way down in there, and you could have some rotting issues with your clump. Of grass there, and plus so. you're missing the most floofiness. I mean, it's a yeah. beautiful stage yes. of the of the grass. You know, don't if it's when it's dead. No, it's in its dormant phase. Allow those seed heads to be up there and looking nice. Don't mm-hmm. don't be just uh, chopping the tops off of them, giving them a flat top. I mean, there are, there are those who can't not exist with things appearing to flow. They need to have. Order at all times in their. You've garden. met my wife. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you know you need to just go yeah. with. If you're going to plant grasses, allow them to be grass. She was looking yeah. at my. She was looking at the. Um, yeah, man. Let, at, let the, the, at the stuff. <laughs> let the grasses flow, man. Yeah, let it go. That's let hey, flow. speaking of uh, letting it flow, if yeah, you buddy. want to get your plants flowing and growing their very best, you need to be using Earthmix garden products and. Uh-huh. Uh, Earthmix Garden Products has been specially developed f- to give the maximum uh, productivity when you're growing, no matter what you're growing. Mm-hmm. And there are pre-mixed soil blends available. Garden Proganics O is at our the professional outdoor growing medium. Uh, Proganics I mm-hmm. is the indoor version. Caroline would recommend that. One of the great things about uh, the Earth Mix line is that none of the soils have any peat in them at all. It all uses the ones that have core in it or that would have peat have coconut core instead. And what that gives you is a, a more sustainably uh, uh, produced product that also gives an added benefit, particularly indoors, of not attracting fungus gnats. And if, you, if you've ever uh, suffered from those with your plants inside, it is peat that is attracting those. If you use Proganics Eye with coconut core in it, you will not have that issue. Now, if you're just looking for general things to uh, be able to improve the soil, uh, soil of what you have, there's a couple of good ways to do that. Uh, Fall gardening, a lot of people will just, if they're if they're boosting their vegetable garden, use Supernatural just to spread a layer over and tilt it in. Yep. If you're planting trees, shrubs, ground covers, whatever, landscape is always the product that you want to think about. Now, there's a whole host of other Earthmix garden products. All are 100% organically produced, done so right here in Nashville, Tennessee, uh-huh. and they're available all over the Tennessee, Kentucky, Southern Indiana, uh, upper Ohio, Alabama. Upper Alabama. Uh, we talked to some folks who had interest from Mississippi this week. So, Mississippi? Yep. So oh, they're wow. About, so uh, they could be coming on. So we're really beginning to expand the network of Earthmix Garden products. Simply type in your address or zoom in to a location near you. Remember this, success in gardening begins at the ground level when you use Earthmix garden products. And we appreciate you giving us a couple of minutes to talk about that and help you take the work out of your garden. You're going to really increase the success factor that you have exponentially. This stuff works, folks. It just, I mean, it, it, it just works. Yeah. It really does. It does. I got, I mean, a, it, I got a, a text message from my good friend Bob Harris. Was telling me he, he said I got some of your stuff, man, and <laughs> it, I grew an avocado from seed, and he's, he says it's amazing. So, so thank you, Bob. Earth mix, sunshine, water, plants, mm-hmm. all mm-hmm. you need, all you need, mm-hmm. all you need, a little bit of well, love. I thought all you needed was love. Yeah, this side. Well, I think there's I think what you really need is what's in room with wow. Caroline. That's yeah. exactly what you need to get those plants growing happy and healthy. Look at all those cute little plants down there in front of you, Caroline. Ah, yeah, so let's start on this side today. So this is our Isley little tiny demo um, setup that we have. So we got just a couple of these mixed containers in. Now I'm going to raise it up. It's kind of Adam, heavy. put one oh. of the... Wow. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Uh-huh. So already set up. You'll want to have this outside. Um, a couple of people were like, can we keep this inside? You could try, but it's no. not going to be happy. It's probably going to tank. Adam, put one of those plants in your hand. Just hold it out. Oh, yeah. Hold the little baby plants. Yeah. Just put it right there. See? 
palm of your hand right palm there. Palm of your hand. So you've got that fern leaf hinoki now, cypress right there. Wow. Now, do we still have show? some Japanese maples in the little containers also? Yes, oh, they had some, I saw some little We've babies. got two little tinies left. We've got some really, really great one gallons. I treated myself to one, and I think Tyler did as well. That's right. I acquired mm -hmm. a bihu. A bihu, and I got one, and I can never remember how to say it, so I'm going to have Tyler say it for me. Mikawa Yatsubusa. <laughs> I've got one of those. Yes. Cool. Do you love it? Yeah, I love it. When I saw cool. we got those in the one gallon, I snagged that right up. Uh, but no, we don't have any Japanese maple in this room today. But yes, we do have very small to very, very large, absolutely gorgeous Japanese maple out here on the lot. Pieces mm -hmm. of art, Caroline. Pe yeah, uh, absolutely. They really are. They're truly spectacular. I buy spectacular. one Japanese maple a year when they come in with Isley. So I'm starting a little collection and I, I absolutely love them. Um, yeah, they're great. But we got these little tiny uh, little tiny plants in that you can use in a mixed container like this one that can stay out year round. It's going to give you some interest in the winter. Or you can make your own or just pot up one of these little guys like a bonsai. So we've got some pine over here. We've got yews. We've got juniper. We've got hinoki cypress. There are so many more out there. I know we got a variegated um, osmanthus that's really, really mm -hmm. cute. And they have blooms that smell really good. So What's that's the curly Q one? The curly Q one right here. Yes. It's a pine. Yep. Mm -hmm. Little white pine? No. It is a black pine. It's a black it pine. Yeah. Okay. Which there is a black pine behind you guys, but we'll talk about that in just a okay. moment. And we've got this Golden Promise Japanese cedar right here. So we've got a couple framing us on either side. Look, bigger than my head. Wow. And just gorgeous. Now, these are uh, cryptomeria. So. Mm -hmm. The freeze really did a number on Cryptum area last year, so just be aware. Decrypt of, of Crypta that. careful. Yeah. Crypta careful. All right, let's hop on over to the other side of the green room. Mm -hmm. So right. down in front, we've got the all gold juniper. Now, for those who don't know what a shore juniper is, this is a cultivar of that that has a decidedly golden cast to it. Obviously. Mm -hmm. You can't see it as much on this camera, um, the color, but this is absolutely gorgeous. I have three planted in front of my switchgrass. I know Austin has some as well. We both really, really love it, and mine look fantastic right now. Uh, they didn't take a hit with the December freeze. They looked really, really good. They actually liked that cold, and it just adds some interest to my front beds. It's a low-growing shrub, so it's not going to get really, really tall, but it is going to sprawl. And the color, um, the color yeah. that uh, the conifers provide in the landscape is is probably the most underappreciated aspect of, particularly fall gardening, because we're coming into that time of year where. A lot of other things are going to be going out of bloom, but the color can really come up when you use colorful conifers to add to mm -hmm. your landscape. Mm -hmm. Look at the uh, look at the the stems on this one. The, yeah. the color goes all the way into them, and then as it looks like it is, it hardens off. It turns. It doesn't turn a true brown, it but it just deepens stays. a little bit. Yes, yeah, so it comes out yellow. It deepens into a green. Um, so there's a lot of contrast on them. And I paired mine, like I said, with my Northwind Switchgrass. Just pairing them with grasses looks great. Like David mentioned, when your grasses start to look dead to you, I that's when I like them the most. Yep. They, Blow in the breeze. They sound a little bit spooky, um, and they just, I, I love them when they do look like that. And then I have to cut them down every spring, but mm -hmm. new ones come up. They're even bigger because I left it up. Um, it's just good. But let's go ahead and finish our little okay. plant tour. So in the corner behind David, it's actually very hard to see because I did cram a lot of stuff in. We have the Jubilee Ooh, Weeping right Alaskan Cedar. That's that yes. one. Yes. Mm -hmm. That one in the corner. I planted a weeping Alaskan cedar. It's not the specific one, but it is one of my favorite plants that I have in my front bed. Um, it was my Christmas tree last year, and cool. then I planted it in ground in the spring. You know, and that's a very good application for a living Christmas tree. Yes. It's, an, it's perhaps non-traditional, mm -hmm. but it uh -huh. gives you a great opportunity to... Uh, Spend probably about the same amount of money as you would on a cut tree. Correct. And then you can plant it in the ground, and it's still mm -hmm. living. Uh, yeah, it was, I think the one I got was about 80 bucks, so it's almost the amount that you would spend on a cut tree. I left it on my front porch, so it stayed outside until the week leading up to Christmas. Then I took it inside. It was in front of my window so I could see it, and I put some lights on it. Then I brought it inside for hey, Let's week talk about these thunderclouds here. Yeah. The, the thunderheads. Uh -huh. uh, that is Thunderhead Japanese Black Pine. Yes. And we just got a couple right there, one on either side. And kind of cord, that. which is always a very cool. Let me the get my Threadleaf yeah. Arborvitae. And then I do want to talk about the one right beside your head, David. So right if you really reach head. right next to you, that is Elegant Japanese Sea 
Seeper. Seeper. <laughs> Seeper. Another, Another, like yeah. That is yeah. correct. So yeah. I hadn't seen anything like that before. I don't know if we've gotten them in at the nursery. I know Austin was very excited about them. Um, but yeah, just another great specimen that you can add to your landscaping from Isley Nursery. And, and of course, uh, the Talavera. Yeah, yeah, and we got, mm-hmm. we, we got a full truckload in just this week. And the good news is, I mean, because those items always sell fast we've got another truck coming in in a couple of weeks so so if you happen to miss if you happen to miss it on this round there will be another opportunity the Mm -hmm. uniqueness of the isley truck i mean folks it's a privilege to come out here to the nursery and see it when you see all of what they have it's one of those trucks where people actually hate it when it's their day off because they (laughs) don't get to help unload well inevitably it's always austin's day it's on monday it always comes in on monday yep he misses it Mm -hmm. i feel like he probably has mixed feelings about it doesn't get to see it but doesn't Doesn't have have to to be up there on that truck yeah Yeah, abroda 07 on youtube uh, saying that the golden bush looks gorgeous with white christmas lights in the time as well oh Mm, man absolutely awesome yeah, right. and the great thing about you know, conifers in general, as the weather cools down, the color intensifies. Yep. So it's always a really great, and, and it changes. Do, do these Adam uh, get that more of a, uh, a bronzy look to them as the, as the cold I weather? Think, I don't think so. I think that's primarily going to be your arborvitaes uh, and <clears throat> the. Uh, um, well, there's one called Fire Chief that does that. Yes. It's an arbovita, and uh, I, think, I think the cryptomerias do that to some degree. The, some of them will bronze up in the winter. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, very nice uh, uh, variation. You know, even getting to see a change in the winter is, is cool, too. Very so. cool. Nina's got a, a question, and she's wanting a recommendation on a small, neat, unique ornamental grass, one- to two-foot clump, perennial and uninvasive, and hopefully something you got in stock here at the nursery. Where is Bridget when we need her? Uh, I know, right? I do have a thought on that. So I have little blue stem. I planted little blue mm-hmm. stem purple arrow. And I'd say the grass itself gets like one foot, maybe one and a half foot tall. But then the flower heads go up to about three feet. But you can see through them. So it makes this nice little um, mm-hmm. like screen that you can see through. So the grass, again, the grass itself doesn't get too tall. It shoots up bloom spikes. And it's super cute. And it stays pretty maintained and uh, just clumps a little bit. Also a native. So that's a yeah. plus. The, if if native is not, you know, a, a huge thing, you can go with um, uh, penicetum, uh, fountain grasses. There's lots of good dwarf ones like uh, Little Bunny and Hamelin. And There's those a bunch are good. of grasses. And we are, yeah, yeah. we are quickly approaching the season where muley grass is going to give us yes. its splendor yes. for, what is it, a couple of weeks? Yeah. It's been, and now, yeah. and if you're going to only buy one, don't waste your money. Yeah. No, buy you something you else. Buy a a you need, you know, you need seven or nine, or uh, they need to be planted in proximity to each other, where they Six, really accentuate this pink head of hair that just emerges. On it. It's it's really spectacular. There is a planting uh, not far from the nursery here that I'm uh, watching. Yes, and we'll be having to put pictures out there. You like things with long hair, don't you? Yeah, it depends on what you're talking about, Josh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, we'll see how. Well, the question Kinda is, covets it, don't you? I mean, is that, uh, is that you do, no, not so much. Just wishing, yeah. wishing for, wishing for flow yeah, and, and uh, go. It, you know, I'm really glad I don't have that issue in my life. Okay. Uh, sure. I you noticed are. you, you sure know, you are. kicking your hair around. You know, looking <laughs> like looking like uh, Jeff Fisher's back in the '90s when he. You know, when yeah. he had the, no, Jeff uh, always had way too much product in his hair, man. Is that right? Did yeah, he now? Yeah, he he's did. watching the show right and now. And the stash. Uh, yeah. Nothing wrong with the mustache. No, but he had a lot of product in it. But he did have did product. He? I mean, oh, gosh, you, you could have hit it. You could have hit him with a with the football, <laughs> and that hair would have broke. I mean, the, mm. so anyway. All right, Tyler, Wait, did coach. you get those photos up that we got? They're in? up. All right, let's go ahead and put those up. So we got a question about Eden climbing rose. Oh, oh that, just kidding. Not, that's not, not it. it. Can that's we do the, it, can we do the grass one? <laughs> I don't have the rose. Can we one. talk about the one that's up is what okay. he wants to do. We yes. can talk about the one that's up. Yes. The question is, why is my grass dying in one spot? Mm. <laughs> uh, maybe the question should be, why is it not dying everywhere? everywhere right. Now, the one spot is likely here's my quick hypothesis without more information than just the photograph is that you've got shelf rock under the ground it's maybe six seven inches deep 
And when it's, you're getting normal precipitation, well, it's, it just does wonderfully. When you get a dry spell like we've got right now, mm -hmm. uh, it dries out and it starts looking dead. You might want to consider watering, watering it, it you know, mm -hmm. quite a bit more uh, than what you're getting. I, I might turn I, a shovel over and you know, turn over a couple of shovels to see if there's some sort of pest, but it doesn't look, it looks like It looks like, that looks like a dep drought. deprivation from yeah. water. Mm -hmm. yeah. so. mm, grass, it can be tricky. All right, Tyler, how about that, that nope. rose? Oh, okay. Nope. We don't have it yet. I'm still working it's on not it. There. He said no. Did it Let's, come in in messages? It did. Okay. Let's talk tree suggestions. Okay. Tree suggestions for middle of front yard, full sun to replace a dead dogwood. Hmm. Well, that's uh, lots of things. Lots My, of things. Now's the time would, to get it I at the nursery. I would suggest, just me personally, I would suggest a single trunk uh, service berry as you, a great. Uh, you do love those. Uh, you know, uh, flowering tree for the front yard but you could also do a uh, red bud you could do a crab apple you could do uh you know all kinds there's some great uh, you if could you want to good old-fashioned silver ginkgo, maple yeah. man i have silver maple yeah. all oh. over my yeah, property man. josh if, if you're trying to replicate <laughs> the 70s the the, the uh, approximate growth habit of a dogwood i don't think that silver maple no. Is no. your best choice. They get no. big. I you have them lining my driveway, it, but... which is pretty, but the saplings that come up oh, yeah. in all over my yard and all of my beds uh, yeah. is wild. Mine well, are really mature. They're pretty, but that was they, the they that big. was the build that was the builder uh, starter kit. Two nandinas yeah, and a silver maple. Yeah, 80s, yeah, man. Yeah. Are we there now, Josh? We could. No, I don't think so. No. 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 But okay. yeah, like Adam said, we have a ton of options yes. here. If you want something yes. a little bit smaller, we did we did name some. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes, I mean, any of, any of your ornamental trees are generally going to be smaller. They're going to be 20 to 30 feet tall. So mm -hmm. Put a ginkgo there. It would yeah. be so pretty. Yeah. 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 There are some more um, dwarf cultivars. That yeah, are, there's a yeah. uh, uh, jade butterfly probably. Yes. The best one. Somebody has one of those. I got I two. Think. You have two of the jade butterflies? Yep. Do you love them? That's so How big far, are they? Teeny tiny. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're going to be. Cute and little. About, uh, I'd say. Three and a half feet, at most right now. Well, you know, they're just, they're just they're, babies. They're going to be they they're going to be with you for the duration. Yes. Josh. Mm -hmm. And when they drop their leaves, it's cool. They're it's gorgeous, the and then the they just whoosh, all at one time. Like there they go. About 10 Caroline, mm -hmm. hey Tyler, we're good to go. All right, let's let's <laughs> get that rose photo up, shall we? So one of our viewers is asking a question. They said, "This is Eden climbing rose. It's usually prolific bloomer, but this year produced only one rose." A healthy but messy little thing. It did experience some freeze damage last year. I pruned the damage in late spring. It vigorously rebounded, but still no roses. I use Bayer 4-in-1 rose treatment, but maybe it needs something more this year. And then also, they said, by the way, your show anchors my Saturday mornings. Cool. And coffee. Awesome. Your show and coffee start a awesome. coffee line, and you'll have the essential elements for a good Saturday. All right, so go. one rose. Well, I, I'm trying to... The only thing I can think of is that it it the damage from the freeze was so severe that it is just trying to survive at this point, mm -hmm. and it could also have come back from the rootstock too to some degree. I don't know. Yeah, without that seeing doesn't it. appear to be the case. That doesn't no. look like um, uh, from below the graft no, type of growth. Was it there another? Was there another rose to the right of that rose? Did that, or what is that? Something looks that, like it. A, can you can you get that pop? I'm just trying to ascertain. <laughs> it's as, pixels. It's not a very okay. good photo. No, that's okay. Well, it's. Uh, I'm just trying to figure out if perhaps something changed light wise. Maybe you know sometimes uh, highlight plants such as roses can really be reactive to just trees growing around it that have you know they they cross Something. over that line where they don't quite get enough hours of sunlight. Now certainly if you've got one. Right next door there. With lots of flowers. Yeah, it would appear like, yeah. that that's not the case. Uh, roses are also you know, heavy feeders. So mm -hmm. you know, if you're not fertilizing them on a monthly basis, mm -hmm. uh, that can also really affect. I would say there. the exception of that is knockouts and uh, uh, drip roses. Oh, yeah. so yeah, you, you don't really have to do way. anything but no. just trim them. But any climbing and hybrid teas, yeah, yes. you got you got to fertilize them. Yep. Sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, you do. All right, how do I bring in my plants from outdoors? 
two hands. Two hands. <laughs> maybe a dolly. Up, maybe hand, get a friend. A hand truck, maybe. A hand yep. truck, if it's yep. big enough, maybe. So we do have a webinar on winterizing houseplants. So if you moved a lot of your plants outside for the summer to get some sunshine and some rain, now's the time to start bringing them in. Those night temps are starting to drop, so they're going to be happy moving inside. So I suggest when you start moving them, like we said, use two hands. But as you pick them up, go ahead and inspect those leaves. Make sure there's not pests on them. I like to give all of my plants a good like wipe down and inspection as I bring them in one at a time. So I make sure I'm not bringing anything into my home that's just going to multiply as it gets warm in my house through the winter. Mm -hmm. And it also gives you time to just clean those leaves that might have gotten some debris from outside. If you really want to be um, mindful of your plant, I suggest putting it next to a window that you can open so it gets a little breeze from outside so it's not just a huge shock when you bring it inside and it's totally switching its climate. It's in something new and it's like, where am I? Yeah. So you can acclimate it that way. Um, sometimes I frantically bring on all my plants right before it freezes See, and, and I don't and have the chance to and do that's that. That's the problem is that frantic bringing yes. in. That's when right. you can be almost assured that you're not just bringing plants in. You're bringing Bringing pests You're bringing, as bringing well. little oh, buddies into your house. Almost You're bringing certainly. little buddies. And, and the, the, your uh, first suggestion is really the best if you can methodically kind of go through and clean them. Perhaps set up a, uh, in the shower. You can spray them in the tub and let them... But you're really, right now, it's still very warm yes. outside. So if you could do your spraying outdoors, mm -hmm. if you discover it, only move into things that are that you can verify that are clean. If you are one of those who wait until the first frost warning to move stuff in, you will move in almost certainly uh, scale, mealybugs, aphids, and probably a few other things. Yes. Mm -hmm. And now, it is, happens. Is, is there a preventative on. drench that you can put on the soil? I know I hear people you talk about. You can use a systemic. I don't suggest doing it unless you need it. Yeah. Um, I do know some other houseplant people that are friends of mine that just, they will regularly treat their houseplants with systemic, or if they bring a new one in, they will. I don't like adding that to my plants if I don't have to, especially when I have them inside or outside. I mean, because it's terrible for our pollinators. Right. Uh, so I do not suggest doing that unless you have a plant that you care a lot about that has an infestation that you are not able to treat with um, neem rubbing alcohol some of those more uh, environmentally loving treatment options yeah, that the, the time just prior to moving in would be the the best time and the least effective to pollinators because right. you're getting ready to move them indoors so they're mm -hmm. they're not really going to be uh available to the pollinators they're going to be sequestered from them so That's if you're right. going to do that that would be the time of year to do it mm -hmm. and then you could don't have to do it anymore the rest of the year hopefully. that's right but go ahead and start moving them in i like to take my time move a couple in a day or so so i can find a good spot and again like we talked about really clean them and inspect them to make sure you're not bringing anything that's going to create an mm -hmm. issue but it doesn't happen every months. time though right what? Doesn't happen no, it time. doesn't happen every Some, time. Sometimes, sometimes I'll bring in a couple. I'll be like, ah, yeah. oh, I care the most about these. I bring them in. And then we get a freeze warning and everyone at base is like, have you brought your houseplants in, Caroline? And I'm like, oh, my God, I don't want to say I haven't, but I haven't. Mm -hmm. And then it turns mm -hmm. into me running back and forth, just bringing lie. all those plants in. Yeah, just tell them, yeah. I did it. Got it. Got it yeah. covered. I'm not a good liar, so oh, okay. so no. Let's talk Mandevia. Someone is wondering, should I bring my Mandevia in for the winter? Yes, if you want it to live. Mm -hmm. It will not overwinter outside here in Middle Tennessee. Um, I have not tried to overwinter one inside my home. I do know that I've read on them that people will cut them back and then let them grow inside. I, it doesn't seem like a plant that's going to really do well going dormant. So bring it inside if you want it to live. Give it a good haircut. Put it near a sunny window. Let it grow a little bit through the winter. I would not suggest fertilizing it over the winter, but as soon as... As soon as it starts getting warm again and you can move your tropicals, your houseplants outside, then just treat it like that houseplant. You can fertilize it and it should just take off for yeah, you. Yeah, and as difficult as it is to cut that back hard <laughs> right now. Yes. Do it now when you and you could leave it out for a while. You probably yeah. got a month before it mm -hmm. becomes a, an easy. issue. Cut it back now, it'll start making some breaks and then it'll be easy to move in. Plus by doing so, you have eliminated a substantial portion of foliage that could have some kind of pest or pathogen on it. So you, you're kind of getting a two for one with your actions there. Hey, Greg in, Greg in Corinth, Mississippi is, is excited about the possibility of earth mix in Mississippi. Oh, yeah. Uh, Greg, just go to your garden center and ask for it. Mm -hmm. Keep asking and keep asking. Yeah. 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 Ask for we it. We happen to mm -hmm. know that. Uh, it can be the it can area, be had. the distribution area can be expanded. So, 
Yes, it can. I love But Earth it's a mix. secret right now. So I don't know how far Corinth, Mississippi is from Pretty south. Madison. Oh. Uh, M- Madison is only three hours south of Memphis, as I. Uh, That's about right. So hopefully we're working on that. Tyler, you look like you have something yeah. to say. Thanks, Caroline. I give it away really easily. <laughs> Body language. <laughs> I just. Yeah, I want I want to show y'all something that I saw this morning actually on my gate. <clears throat> and this is the uh the, What a photo. It yeah, looks this, like Dracula. This is the mm-hmm. chrysalis of a Gulf fritillary butterfly, which is the native fritillary. Butterf- the a native basically our our wild passion flower vine hosts this butterfly. Oh, wow. Nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Pretty beautiful. So if you see these little guys flying around now on the on the upper side of their wings, the underside is this beautiful pattern, but on the upper side, it's more of kind of like a rusty orange. Yep. So if you see them, and then their caterpillars are also rusty orange, and they kind of look a little devilish. <laughs> little devils. <laughs> uh huh. And they always show up around you know late August, September range, and then they completely devour the plant. They just hmm. they you know um, it's almost like. You don't need to do any pruning hardly because just kind of like how the monarch caterpillar does right just strips it hmm. and uh and then they go off they find a place like in in my case under right underneath my gate one of them is actually on literally on the hardware that's like swinging back and forth watch his fingers seems like an unusual yeah. spot it, doesn't it it, is, it does seem like it but they're not there for very long because after about 11 days they're gone they're they're butterflies and they're off and they do migrate down to the Gulf. Okay, so that's what I was going to ask you that. That's, that's what why, I figured. That's why Gulf is in the name. But they're they're a, an incredible little butterfly, and in hardy number, yes. unlike the monarchs. You know, so. it's, Quite it's, it's really amazing the um, how nature has figured out how to have multi generation butterflies that uh, migrate that. They have never been to or from the places that they're traveling, and yet they know how to get there. Mm-hmm. So, and there may be generations removed from the, you know, so it's anyway, that's talk about a collective unconscious or something it, going it's, on. It's an amazing thing. Another amazing thing yes. is look at how many pansies that we've got right yeah. there, just on that one picture right that's there. Right. That's a tiny and little And where that is, too. is uh, right here in Nashville, Tennessee at Bates nursery and garden center. That's right. Since 1932, that lady right there on the screen, my grandmother, she uh, founded our business and, um, uh, uh, we've been working at it ever since, and I think she'd be proud of what we're doing today. Uh, she could not imagine that we uh, have the numbers of things that we have to offer, the from all of the trees, shrubs, ground covers, perennials, ornamental grasses, uh, annual flowers, everything that you can imagine for your lawn, your landscape, plus the other thing that I got from my grandmother was this whole knowledge and approach to organic soils. Uh, you know, back in the day, there weren't uh, commercial fertilizers, yeah. so they had to figure out how to do these things organically. So I got to grow up helping her do that kind of thing, and we've taken that uh, information and refined it to really create this uh, great line of soils called Earth Mix. So, so uh, if you come in to Bates Nursery and Garden Center, see what all we've got. Bring your questions with you because that's really where we shine. You know, our uh, horticultural specialists here at Bates Nursery and Garden Center uh, are here to give you answers and help you to get the right plants in the right place the first time. You know, we're mm-hmm. uh, we're going to ask you before you leave to to lay your plants down. <laughs> we have Adam and I helped a gentleman the other day who was you know he was trying to do that box door thing where you drive no 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 you 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 no. we're trying to shed the wind we don't want them standing up if a little dirt spilling out is not a big deal you want your plants to lie down you don't want them to get wind burned mm-hmm. now for sure that uh, becomes less of an issue as things begin to cool off and of course a lot of things that are deciduous begin to drop their leaves but uh, with regard to everything we we have here at Bates Nursery and Garden Center you need to come see us. Now, I have talked a little bit about our parking lot project. We're probably really? a couple of weeks away from still. It's This thing has really um, 
It's been a formidable. It's a burden. It's been a formidable challenge, but I really believe that the uh, the end result will be well received. Where you're going to have a an area that is much flatter than it ever was before. I'm talking about specifically the front parking area, uh, and also we have added on some additional uh, parking area so that makes it a little bit easier getting in and out of here. So anyway, we're always great. trying to work on improving things. You know, we're fortunate to have been in business these 91 years. But the downside to that is is that everything gets old. So you have to keep working at it, and that's what we try to do here, whether it's uh, adding structures or working on our surfaces uh, or bringing in new plant cultivars that you maybe have never heard of. Right. That's the way we roll at Bates Nursery and Garden Center, where we are conveniently located one mile north of Briley Parkway at exit 19 on Wines Creek Pike, mm-hmm. just minutes from Rivergate, Opry Mills, downtown Nashville, Nashville West. And I'm, I promise you, even Brentwood, from Smyrna, Josh, Brentwood, Smyrna, it's Bellevue. worth the drive from anywhere. We have, we have folks that will at least annually make a, a trip for, from Cape Girardeau, Missouri, yeah. or maybe... Uh, Maybe Tupelo. Tupelo. Yeah. Knoxville. So anyway, come see us. Bates Nursery and Garden Center. Beautifying Nashville since 1932. And we appreciate you giving us a moment to talk about that. Check out my website, by the way. One yep. little, final little plug there. Uh, you can get there on the website here. Just scroll down the page. And right there it comes up with the newsletter. Mm-hmm. Put your name and your email address in there and check that you actually want it or else you won't get it. Right. Uh, and if you decide at some point you don't want it, you can just un- unsubscribe. You know, we we want to uh, inform and maybe mildly entertain. Possibly. Uh, but we don't want to clutter your inbox. So we'd love to have you uh, subscribe and check it out over at BatesNursery.com. So. Let's clutter your ear boxes with what's in bloom with, with, with everyone. Autumn. With everybody. Autumn. I called you Autumn. Autumn. Happy first autumn. day of Autumn, Adam. That's, that's, <laughs> that's a hybrid. That's a hybrid between Carol. Austin and Adam is Autumn. Autumn. <laughs> wow. wow. Okay. Oh whenever they're cool. on, that's it. Yep. <coughs> autumn is here. So, well, Autumn's not here. So I would imagine that it's going to be a lot of the same things. Probably. That, in bloom, uh, that we've talked about already. Right now on this this broadcast, mm-hmm. uh, like Rutabecchia, you know. Rutabecchia. Uh, Mine's kind of bloomed out, yeah, but it's still but it's going still a little going. bit. Ragweed uh, going wild. We all feel yeah. that right now. Crape yeah. myrtles. Crape myrtles. i got to throw Crape it out to the noble zinnia. Oh, yeah. Because Austin is not one to mention right off the rip. Oh. As he says. Oh. He's oh. not here. Does he have a zinnia bias? He does. he does. Yes, he does. So, he does. Okay. It's a it's one of my favorite annuals. He's a Xenia hater. He really is. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, I'm having giant butterflies feeding on mine. Mm. Uh-huh. I mean, have you ever seen the giant uh, uh, swallowtail butterfly? Yes. Mm-hmm. And the tiger one? They're yeah. huge. Yep. They're giant. And they love Xenia. Goldenrod. Yep. Goldenrod, Goldenrod, which is what everybody blames for their allergies. But, well, it's, but it's it, the it, it, That is true. And I, and I did say a funny thing yesterday on the we have a, a guest who was shopping in the perennials, and she had a golden rod in her hand. And of course, bees doing what bees do—you know, they're pollinators. She was horrified. She wanted the plant, but the bees were buzzing <laughs> it. And I, I just approached her. I said, "No, no, they're, they're not going to sting you. They're intoxicated with the pollen. I just don't like them." I go. Okay. You, you've got a flowering thing in your hand. They're, mm-hmm. they're, they're going to kind of tag along. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, yeah. that's kind of the deal with flowers. Bees like them. Bees yes. do love them, and that's why they're there. That's why things flower. And you found out, Caroline, that that yellow flower. I don't forgive me if we mentioned this before. We did. Sneezeweed. Yeah. Sneezeweed. And we uh, talked about that last yeah. week. But if you missed last week's episode, Josh and I were talking about those short, little, gorgeous yellow flowers that fill up fields out in the country. Uh, I did get a picture, forgot to send it to Tyler, but that is sneezeweed. Uh, Bridget ID'd it immediately. So They're actually getting kind of tall, too. Yes. They're, they're, they're mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, they start to get a little bit tall. The ones near me are probably about, yay tall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was rather meek. It was. Uh, my Jane Magnolia is about to bloom yeah. again. She yeah. is butted up, not in full bloom yet, but will be soon. And uh, ironweed's still blooming, too. Mm-hmm. So. Yes. Yeah, there's a lot still happening out there. And it's a great thing about this time of year is that there are a great many late-season perennial-type plants and that, that are also natives that give you a great 
show, great color. It will not be long before the uh, Sumex begin to color up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's almost that time. That oh, that's a great. Yeah. That's a great mm-hmm. show. Great so let's wrap year. up the morning with some hydrangea questions. Okay. We have quite a few. <laughs> well, it would not be a show without the- Without the hydrangeas. When is the best time to prune dwarf oak leaf hydrangeas that are way overgrown? Well, I thought they were supposed to be dwarf. Well, <laughs> I don't know what happened. Uh, I do find that dwarf stuff is it's, kind it's of a, a lie. It's a relative state of dwarf. They're half leaves. Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, in general, oak leaves are going to bloom on old wood. So you want to prune them uh, after they're done blooming if you want to make sure you don't uh, prune off any. So if you prune them now, you can prune them when they go dormant in the fall. Uh, you're just not going to have as many blooms next year. You know what? I, I so. just do it. We do it at our house. We just, whenever they get too big, we just prune them. Yeah, and yeah. and you, you have pretty much have the knowledge that this next season after you've done that, you're not going to get many blooms. But what you get is beautiful, thick foliage down mm-hmm. to the ground. And then the, the blooms will come back. So yeah. I don't yeah. even worry about it. You know, they're... You're going to get a lot of blooms. If you wait until the perfect time to do it, well, you probably won't do it. Mm -hmm. Oak leaves are probably my favorite leaves as far as hydrangeas go. Mm -hmm. They have a lot of interest in in their shape and just their texture. I mean, they're gorgeous. And the fall color, too. And the fall color. Yep, I love them. All right, little lime hydrangea growing out almost flat, pruned but hard back in the spring to correct it. So should they prune it in the spring to correct it? Yes. The flat growing... You could even, you know, I'm have not to wait following for could, some you reason. You could prune them uh, this winter if you want to. Yep. I'm yep. not following the flat reference there. What, what do we, what I'm do we guessing do? some of the Quiet. lower limbs are kind okay. of growing out and close to the ground. Okay. I guess. So but. side shear it. Okay. Yeah. If, mm-hmm. if that's what you want to do to, in order to, you know, bring in some of those uh, lateral growing branches. Um, they flower on the current year wood, and that's what Adam was alluding to is that. So you're not going to do any damage to them by trimming them now uh, because the new growth that comes out and emerges in the spring Mm -hmm. is where the buds will form on those. Mm -hmm. And our third hydrangea question of the morning. When do I cut my limelight hydrangea? It's looking sad. So mine are starting to wilt a little bit, and we talk about this all the time, but I did give one of mine a cut back, one of my panicle hydrangeas in April, and now it's full show blooming, whereas my Mm -hmm. other ones are tired, uh, you know, they're, they're bloomed out. I let my bloom head stay up into the winter because I like how they look. But pruning one back in April, I did it mid-April. And, I mean, things are, it's probably at its peak right now while everything else is tired. Mm-hmm. So yeah, That's a good idea. Mm-hmm. Well, it was sad. It wasn't tired. I mean, Mine is tired. Her, yeah, you never, have very emotional sad. plans. Yeah, really? I mean, they're, I do. they're sad. They're it's tired. It's full of emotions. I think, <laughs> I think perhaps you're projecting. Maybe. Uh, Am I sad? I don't think so because I'm surrounded by plants. How could you be? (laughs) <laughs> I don't know. It's a conundrum. Who knows? Well, you know, she's casting human emotions upon. onto these plants. Yes. Yeah. They're my friends. I mean, I have to. But let's get back to the topic on hand <laughs> talking about cutting back limelight hydrangeas. I think we just went over it, didn't yeah, we? I mean, yeah. it, it would I mean, but would what do you guys think about leaving the blooms up? So they're saying it's looking, it's not looking great right now. Like we talked about with the grasses, like we've talked about with peonies. I mean, plants aren't going to look great all the time. That's mother nature. That's mm-hmm. things that Correct. are living. They're not always going to look fantastic. I mean, I look great in the mornings, but not everybody mm-hmm. does. So <laughs> do you guys leave those spent bloom heads up on your limelight hydrangeas? Well, <clears throat> I don't have limelight. I have, uh, Neither do I. I have a quick fire. I have- no bells. And mm-hmm. I do leave mine on there. I, and I've we do as well. Them, mm-hmm. so, yeah. You know, you don't have to prune them off. I mean, they mm-hmm. will rebloom. The and next and year. again, mm-hmm. the, and then they blow all up from the neighborhood all into your swimming And pool. again, mm-hmm. similar <laughs> to similar to some of the ornamental grasses that have hollow stems, yeah. uh, if you have an unusually wet period, they can, I have seen them do this, rot out with water standing in the stems. Now, uh-huh. it's less likely on those than it is with ornamental grasses that have hollow stems, but sure. it can happen. So, uh, again, it's the persistent dried blooms that uh, continue on after the color has faded are really an attractive mm-hmm. part of it. So kind of a, adapt your uh, likability to things and you know, em- embrace the entire seasonality of all the different looks you get uh, from different times of well, year. during that transition from when, when, when they were actually 
bloomed until they start to dry out. They do get a little sad looking. So well, you know, once they dry out, I would gorgeous. I would use the hand pruner approach and not the shear approach. Just cut mm. the the errant ones, the ones that yeah. look bad here and there. Don't cut the whole thing. Yeah. That's the way I would do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, and we did get one live question, and on Instagram, we'll go ahead and okay. wrap up with this one. Winter flower suggestions besides pansies. Violas. That's a tricky one. Well, I feel like people put those in the same. Um, I feel like my mic just got louder. Sorry, I'm adjusting distracted. you. Thank little you, little Tyler. Um, those are probably the same. I think they're they're looking for something a little bit different. Now, as far as winter interest for me goes, it's not flowering, but I talk about heuchera all the time. Mm, they're, they're, Mine look great in the winter. How uh, about, we, uh, sedges? Those, sedges, uh, yeah. Nice, uh, like feather falls and mm -hmm. gold, gold sedge. That, and, that's good. and colorful foliage in general is really what is uh, best accentuated by the colder weather that we know is coming along. We haven't seen it yet, but we know it's on the way. It's coming. <sighs> I'm not ready. So a beautiful conifer. A chartreuse there conifer mm -hmm. right there in that pot. Come on out and see us. Hey, you got to come see what came in on the Isley truck. It's amazing, folks. I am not kidding you. You've got to. There's some. There's some Japanese maples on the main runway out there that are just amazing. They really are. They, so come okay. on, check Great, them out. Big ones, little ones, all the way around. Hey, folks. Music means that this edition of the At Home Show is coming to a close. We want to thank everybody for participating. We want you to go out there, like, share, subscribe do everything tell the neighbors about all the social media platforms that we're on and uh we're gonna be back next yeah. saturday we'll be you right know, here. so but uh, for everybody here at the green room see you next saturday morning <laughs>